What if you heard that a man sold an airport that didn't exist? Would you believe it? Imagine for a moment that you're living in a world where the audacity of deception knows no bounds. A world where an individual can sell a figment of their imagination for an astronomical sum of $242 million. This is not a work of fiction, but a real-life tale of one of the most audacious scams in history. Our story begins in Nigeria, a country rich in culture and history, but also a hotbed for some of the most ingenious con artists the world has ever seen. The protagonist of our tale, or should we say the antagonist, is Emmanuel Nwude, a man whose charm and cunning would lead him down a path of deception that would shake the world of finance to its core. Enter Nelson Sakaguchi, a high-ranking director of Banco Noroeste, one of Brazil's most prestigious banks, a man of integrity, intelligence, and a keen business sense. Little did he know that he was about to become the unsuspecting victim of a scheme so grand it would go down as one of the most audacious in the annals of crime. The stage was set for a drama that would involve a fake airport, a conniving con artist, and a Brazilian bank. The plot was as intricate as it was audacious, a testament to the lengths some individuals will go to in their pursuit of ill-gotten wealth. This is a tale of audacity, deceit, and the power of persuasion. It's a story that will leave you questioning the very nature of trust, and the lengths some will go to exploit it. It's a story that will make you question everything you thought you knew about the world of finance and the power of deception. So, brace yourselves as we dive into this intriguing web of deceit. The man behind this audacious plot was Emmanuel Nude, a Nigerian businessman. Emmanuel Nude was no ordinary businessman. He was a man who carried an aura of authority, a man with an uncanny ability to persuade and convince. Born and raised in Nigeria, Emmanuel was a prominent figure in the country's business circle. He was known for his ambitious ventures, his calculated risks, and his charismatic persona. But beneath that veneer of respectability, there was a cunning mind at work. Emmanuel Nwude had his beginnings in the banking sector where he quickly climbed the ranks at Union Bank of Nigeria, owing to his sharp intellect and relentless drive. It was here that he honed his skills in negotiation, finance, and the art of persuasion. Yet his ambitions were not confined to the world of banking. He had his sights set on bigger things. In the mid-90s, Nwu Day made a bold move. He started posing as a high-ranking government official, the then governor of the central bank who was called Paul Ogwuma to be precise. He used his considerable influence and network to lend credibility to his new identity. He had business cards printed, forged documents prepared, and even had an office set up to match his new role. He even recruited five other accomplices to pose as various government officials, including one who posed as the director of aviation. He played the part perfectly, with his tailored suits, smooth talking, and an air of authority that few dared to question. What was most striking about Emmanuel was his ability to manipulate situations in his favor. He was a master at reading people, understanding their motivations, and exploiting their weaknesses. With his seemingly unshakable confidence, and his in-depth knowledge of the Nigerian government and its workings, he was able to convince even the most skeptical individuals of his authenticity. But all this was just a setup, a grand stage on which New Day was about to perform the greatest act of his life, an act that would shock the world and rewrite the annals of fraud. Emmanuel, a man of many faces, had set the stage for one of the biggest frauds in history. The prey to this elaborate scam was none other than Nelson Sakaguchi, a director at the Brazilian Banco Noroeste. Nelson Sakaguchi was a man of considerable influence and responsibility. As a director of Banco Noroeste, one of Brazil's most prominent banks, he was accustomed to handling high-stake deals and making significant decisions. His position put him in the direct line of sight of Emmanuel the mastermind behind the scheme and his five accomplices. Sakaguchi was known for his sharp business acumen and a keen eye for profitable ventures. However, in this particular instance, his trust in Emmanuel and the tantalizing promise of a lucrative deal blinded him to the red flags that should have raised his suspicions. The deal was alluring indeed. Emmanuel presented it as a golden opportunity to invest in a burgeoning sector, an airport in the heart of Nigeria's capital, Abuja. He painted a picture of a thriving hub of commerce and travel, a gateway connecting Nigeria to the rest of the world. The potential returns were massive, and for Sakaguchi, the prospect of such a profitable investment was too enticing to resist. Emmanuel, with his persuasive charm and apparent connections, 
managed to gain Sakaguchi's trust after the former replied to one of numerous letters regarding the construction of a modern airport for Nigeria's then new capital city, Abuja. He presented himself as a reliable partner, someone who had access to the right resources and people to make this project a reality. Sakaguchi, seeing the potential in the deal, felt confident in his decision to invest. He poured a significant amount of the bank's money into this venture, fully believing in the promises made by Emmanuel. He was convinced that this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that would yield astronomical returns for Banco Noroest. His trust in Emmanuel and his hopes for a lucrative deal were absolute. But as we know, things are not always as they seem. Sakaguchi, despite his experience and expertise, had become the unsuspecting victim of one of the most audacious scams in history. The airport he had invested in was nothing more than a mirage, a fabricated vision designed to deceive and manipulate. Please do us a favor. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share so that we can grow Infomatics together. Let's continue. The plot thickens as Emmanuel, posing as a government official, offered Sakaguchi a deal of a lifetime. Now let's delve into the details of this elaborate scam. Emmanuel Nude, the mastermind behind this audacious plot, spun a tale of a lucrative investment opportunity. To this end, he recruited five other accomplices, each posing as high-ranking Nigerian officials. They even rented posh offices in London and began sending letters to various entities around the globe for potential funding for an airport in Nigeria. In 1995, Sakaguchi, a Japanese who was running the Brazilian bank, Banco Noroeste, replied to one of these letters. The letter looked legitimate with official Nigerian stamps and letterheads. Once Sakaguchi had made contact and expressed interest, Emmanuel presented him with a proposal, a chance to fund the construction of a new airport in the capital city of Nigeria, Abuja. Emmanuel, with his charisma and convincing demeanor, painted a picture of an airport bustling with international flights, a hub of commerce and travel that would surely rake in massive profits. The projected returns were staggering. Emmanuel promised Sakaguchi a hefty $10 million commission on the total investment, a figure that was too enticing to ignore. The bait was set. All Sakaguchi had to do was bite. And bite he did. Emmanuel had done his homework. He knew that Sakaguchi, a high-ranking executive at the Brazilian bank, Banco Noroeste, was eager to expand the bank's international footprint. This proposed airport project seemed like the perfect opportunity, a surefire way to establish a strong presence in Africa and beyond. Sakaguchi's blind faith played right into Emmanuel's hands. The allure of high returns and the promise of a global recognition clouded his judgment. He saw a golden opportunity where others might have seen red flags. Emmanuel's guise as a government official and his detailed, seemingly well-researched proposal were enough to convince Sakaguchi. They set up a meeting in London and funded Sakaguchi's stay in a luxurious five-star hotel in the city. After meeting up with Emmanuel and his team in London, he was ready to invest, ready to put his faith and his bank's money into this venture. But the airport was a mirage, a figment of Emmanuel's imagination. There were no blueprints, no construction plans, no government approvals. It was a castle built on sand, ready to crumble at the slightest touch. And just like that, Sakaguchi was lured into the trap. He was caught in a web of deceit, a victim of one of the most audacious scams in history. The stage was set for the fallout, and the consequences would be catastrophic. Over the following few years, Sakaguchi would go on to make various transfers to Emmanuel and his team, totaling a whopping $242 million, all without the approval of the bank's board. You see, back then, Sakaguchi's high position in the bank meant that he could sanction these transactions without much scrutiny from the authorities. The scam, as audacious as it was, couldn't last forever. A scheme of such magnitude was bound to unravel eventually, and when it did, it shook the banking industry in Brazil to its very core. The discovery of the scam was as unexpected as the scam itself. The Spanish bank Santander wanted to acquire Banco Noroeste in 1997. A routine audit at the Brazilian bank revealed a series of transactions that raised more than a few eyebrows. Payments totaling some $242 million had been made to various unknown entities in Nigeria. A third of the bank's value had disappeared into thin air. The alarm bells started ringing, and the auditors dug deeper. The shockwaves were immediate and far-reaching. It wasn't just the Brazilian bank that felt the tremors. The entire banking industry was left gasping, grappling with the reality of such an audacious scam. The trust that had been painstakingly built over years was suddenly under scrutiny. 
The question on everyone's lips was, how could this happen? The immediate aftermath was a flurry of activity. High-level meetings, emergency sessions, damage control strategies. The bank was scrambling to figure out the extent of the losses while also trying to manage the public relations nightmare that was rapidly unfolding. The repercussions were felt globally. How could a scam of this magnitude go undetected? What checks and balances had failed? The banking industry was forced to take a hard look at its systems and processes. There was a sense of urgency, a need to ensure that such a scam could never happen again. The Nigerian who had masterminded the scam was suddenly the most wanted man in the world. The search for him became an international manhunt. Law enforcement agencies from around the world were on his tail, trying to bring him to justice. In the midst of all this chaos, one thing was clear. The seemingly invincible house of cards that the Nigerian had painstakingly built had come crashing down. The scam had ended, but the fallout was just beginning. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video so we can grow this channel together. In the aftermath of the scam, lives were shattered, careers ruined, and a bank in shambles. The fallout was nothing short of catastrophic. Banco Noroeste, a once thriving financial institution, crumbled under the weight of the scam. The bank's reputation was tarnished beyond repair, and it was sold to Santander at far less than the value it could have achieved. Shareholders were left in the lurch, their investments evaporating overnight. The Brazilian banking industry was rocked to its core, with the scandal serving as a stark reminder of the risks of unregulated transactions and lax security measures. But the devastation didn't stop at the bank's doors. Let's take a moment to consider the personal toll. Nelson Sakaguchi, the man who unwittingly facilitated the transaction, saw his illustrious career come crashing down. His trust, once his greatest asset, became his downfall. Not only was he professionally disgraced, but the scandal also took a toll on his personal life. Friends and colleagues distanced themselves, plus he was eventually tried at a Swiss court and handed jail time. The ripple effects also didn't stop at the borders of Brazil. The banking industry worldwide took a long, hard look at their practices in the wake of the scandal. It sparked a wave of reforms and stricter regulations to safeguard against such monumental frauds. The scam served as a wake-up call a stark reminder of the potential for deception and corruption in an industry built on trust. And what about the mastermind himself, the Nigerian who sold a non-existent airport? His audacity, while criminal, left an indelible mark. It highlighted the dark underbelly of the world of high-stakes transactions, where fraudsters can exploit the trust and greed of others for their gain. As we delve deeper into the aftermath, we see a world irrevocably altered by one man's audacious scam, Lives upended, a bank destroyed, an industry shaken, and a society left questioning the very systems they thought were secure. Please subscribe to the channel, like and share this video so we can grow together in our quest to be informed. But what became of Emmanuel Nwude, the mastermind of this audacious scam? Well, the gears of justice, while they may grind slowly, they do grind. In the case of Emmanuel, they ground to a halt at his doorstep in February of 2004. The Nigerian authorities, with assistance from international law enforcement agencies, arrested him and his accomplices. His arrest marked the beginning of a long and tumultuous trial that would captivate Nigeria and the world. Nwude's trial was not without its share of drama. There were allegations of bribery, intimidation, and even violence. There were complaints of jury intimidation. This led to the judge at his original trial in Abuja insisting the case be sent to a different state. Lagos. Even there, there was a bomb threat in one of the trials leading to an evacuation of the courthouse. This was found to be a false alert after police investigations. One of his accomplices also died in a motor accident during this period. A death many suspect was a deliberate act to prevent his former team member from admitting guilt. But amid all the theatrics, the evidence against him was overwhelming. The court sessions were marred with tension as the prosecutors presented irrefutable evidence, detailing the intricate web of deceit and fraud that Emmanuel had woven. In the end, Emmanuel was found guilty after Sakaguchi was brought in to testify against him. He was sentenced to five years in prison. Additionally, he was ordered to repay the Brazilian bank a staggering sum of over $100 million. This was one of the largest restitution orders ever handed down in a Nigerian court. But what of the stolen money? Efforts to recover the ill-gotten gains have been ongoing as they've been fraught with difficulties. 
the vast bulk of the money had been funneled through a complex network of shell companies and offshore accounts, making it difficult to trace. Despite these challenges, a substantial amount has been recovered and returned to the defrauded bank, including a $10 million payment to the Nigerian government. Emmanuel's conviction sent shockwaves through the world of international finance and crime. It was a stark reminder that even the most cunning and audacious of scams can eventually be uncovered, and the perpetrators brought to justice. Well, sort of. Because the story doesn't end there. Despite his conviction and sentence, Emmanuel was later released from prison after just two years under controversial circumstances, raising questions about the effectiveness of the justice system in dealing with high-profile fraud cases. Following his release from prison, Emmanuel filed a lawsuit to retrieve some of his seized properties from the authorities, alleging that these were obtained before the crime. He has allegedly recovered some $52 million from the state. However, it appears his brush with the law is never-ending. In 2016, he was arrested on murder charges following a land dispute with a neighboring community led by 200 men affiliated with Emmanuel, in which a security officer died and four police officers wounded. Please like, subscribe, and share. This elaborate scam shook the world, but what implications did it truly have? The rippling effects were far-reaching, altering the landscape of global banking and international business deals. In the aftermath, the banking industry found itself under a microscope with regulators worldwide tightening their oversight. New policies were rolled out, aiming to safeguard against such audacious frauds. Scrutiny of international deals intensified as banks and governments alike became more cautious. The fallout didn't stop at the banking sector. The scam also cast a long shadow over Nigeria's reputation. The audacity of the fraud, while the work of one man and five other accomplices, unfairly tainted the image of an entire nation in the eyes of some. This unfortunate stereotype has lingered, posing challenges for legitimate Nigerian businesses seeking international partnerships. The tale of the fake airport serves as a cautionary tale for us all. It reminds us of the need for diligence, transparency, and accountability in our personal and professional dealings. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Infomatics for more mind-blowing content.